Hey, it's Michelle, your CXC Biology Tutor. In this past paper solutions video, I'll be covering the CSET Human and Social Biology June 2015 paper 1, and we'll be looking at all the questions 1 to 60. Alright, so question number 1. The process by which living organisms get energy from their food is... So it would have to be respiration release of energy from the breakdown of food. Question 2. Which of the following organisms have cellular cell walls as part of their structure? So the options that they gave are fungi, plants, and bacteria. But I believe there's an error here. From my knowledge, the answer should only be plants. Plants have cellular cell walls, but fungi they have cell walls that are made of a substance called chitin and bacteria they have their cell walls made of a substance called peptidoglycan so this is an error on CXC's part but if you had to choose one I would have to go with the maybe the one and two only A Okay, part three, number three, during osmosis, the movement of water molecules through the semi-permeable membrane continues until, so it would have to continue until the water molecules is equalized on both sides. So the amount of water should be equal on both sides. Question four. The amount of energy in food chains decreases at each trophic level because so out of these three options the reason why the energy decreases will be because respiration occurs as one of the activities that occurs in the organisms and then the organisms are more active so one and three so that would be B Alright, going on to question 5, microorganisms are an important part of the nitrogen cycle. Which of the following microorganisms contribute directly to nitrate buildup in a soil? So we have a list of different bacteria and also fungi involved in the nitrogen cycle. So the correct answer for this one would be the nitrifying bacteria. So normally nitrifying bacteria work in two ways. They can convert the ammonium compounds produced from nitrogen fixation. They convert those ammonium compounds into nitrites and then nitrites are converted into nitrates. So the nitrifying bacteria would produce the, the nitrates. In some cases you may see nitrogen fixing bacteria producing nitrates directly but normally nitrogen fixing bacteria would convert the nitrogen gas in the air into nit into ammonium. So the best answer for that one would be the nitrifying bacteria. Denitrifying bacteria, the, the, those are the bacteria that would actually help to reduce the buildup of nitrates in the soil. So they convert excess nitrates back into nitrogen gas in the air. Alright, moving on to question 6. Which of the following foods would best prevent constipation? So constipation is when you're not having a regular bowel movement. So the correct answer for this would have to be the fruit and vegetable salad. They would provide a good source of roughage or dietary fiber which is necessary for, for bowel movement. Question 7. Which of the following reagents gives a positive test for the main food present in a slice of baked potato? So we're looking at food tests here. So baked potato, potato you know is rich in starch. So you're looking for the test for starch and the reagent that would be used to test the potato for starch. So that would be the iodine solution. So that's C. You know the burette test is for proteins, 
the ethanol test is for fats and the Benedict solution is for reducing sugars like glucose. Okay, question eight. Quashiorica is a deficiency disease caused by a lack of. So the nutrient that is lacking in the diet would be proteins so that causes quashiorica. So that's a deficiency disease. Okay, item nine refers to the following diagram which shows the structure of a typical tooth. So you can see the different layers labeled. So it says which parts label A, B, C, and D supplies the tooth with food. So food, the nutrients are going to be provided for the tooth through the blood vessels. And the blood vessels would have to be a part of the pulp, the pulp cavity, which is labeled C. So remember the pulp cavity both contains blood vessels and nerves. So the nerves will give it the sensitivity and the blood vessels will supply the food. So the correct answer would have to be C, which is pointing at the pulp. Items 10 to 11 refer to the following diagram, which shows a part of the digestive tract of a human. So in answering items 10 to 11, each option may be used once, more than once, or not at all. So the first question, 10, which organ secretes a substance which neutralizes hydrochloric acid? So that would have to be A, which is pointing at the gallbladder. The gallbladder releases bile, which has been made in the liver. And the bile helps to neutralize the hydrochloric acid, which actually comes from the stomach, which is C. So the correct answer would have to be A. Okay, so for question 11, which organ is responsible for the digestion of protein only? So we should know that protein digestion occurs in the stomach. So the stomach is C. So that would be the correct answer. Right, let's move on to question 12. So which of the following are properties of enzymes? So they work best at particular pH, they are not affected by temperature, they work on only one substrate. So the correct answer for that would have to be 1 and 3. Because we know that enzymes are very much influenced and affected by the temperature. You know that if it gets too hot, the temperature is too high, it, they can be denatured. So one and three would be the answer for that. Question 13. The process by which undigested food is eliminated from the body is called? So the answer for that is A, egestion. So the removal of undigested waste material excretion would be the removal of metabolic waste material so there's a difference so metabolic waste material meaning that this material has been produced from metabolic or chemical reactions in the body so A is the correct answer number 14 which of the following combinations shows the correct percentage of oxygen and carbon dioxide found in the lungs of a healthy person so you're thinking about the amount of oxygen and carbon dioxide that is going to be that are going to be inhaled into the lungs. So you should know that the percentage oxygen in the air is actually 21% and the amount of carbon dioxide in the air is 0.03%. So D would have to be the correct answer. So that would be the amount of each gas that would get into the lungs. Now the percentage of each gas that would be exhaled from the lungs, that would be breathed out. Now that would be B, 16% for oxygen, so you would expect less oxygen to be breathed out. And then with the carbon dioxide, you would expect a greater percentage, which is 4%. So that would be in the case where, where you breathe out those gases. So that would be the percentage amount of each gas that would be breathed out from the lungs. 
Okay, question 15. Climbing up a mountain, a group of hikers finds that breathing becomes difficult. This is most likely because, so as you, the higher you get, so an increase in altitude, there is less oxygen in the air. So A would have to be the correct answer. So that, that's what makes breathing very difficult at high altitudes. Okay, question 16. Which of the following properties of membranes are required for rapid gaseous exchange? So we have the three options, moist, thin walled, small surface area to volume ratio. So the correct answer for that would have to be one and two only. So they have to be moist and thin walled so the gases can rapidly diffuse across. Definitely not three. They need a large surface area to volume ratio. So you need a large surface area so that more of the gas can actually diffuse. Okay, question 17. During respiration, the release of energy in a cell occurs when? So we're going to have the breakdown of ATP releasing the energy. So therefore, the ATP will be converted into ADP. So we go from adenosine triphosphate, which is a storage molecule for energy. And then when the bond is broken, you have the release of energy. So then it's converted into adenosine diphosphate. So ATP is converted to ADP, so that releases the energy. So when you're actually making energy, then the ADP would be converted to ATP. Remember, ATP is the energy storage molecule. So B is the correct answer for that one. Okay, item 18 refers to the following. So we have a graph here. Increased risk of lung cancer versus the number of cigarettes smoked per day. So question 18 asks, which of the following can be deduced from the graph? So out of these options, it would have to be A, as the number of cigarettes smoked per day increases, the risk of getting lung cancer increases. You can see that generally from the graph. So there's an increased risk of lung cancer as you smoke more cigarettes per day. Okay, question 19. Why do we need transport systems in the human body? So we have these three options to transport substances from one part of the body to another. Yes. To produce hormones for our coordination of body processes. No. And part three, to protect the body against diseases. Yes. So that means the correct answer would have to be one and three. So this one is kind of tricky. So hormones are released into the blood and we know the blood is part of the circuitry system which is transport system in the human body. But the transport system itself is not actually producing the hormones. We have an endocrine system that produces the hormones. So if they said um, for the transport of hormones, well then that would be included. So it only has to be one and three. We know that in the blood, we have the white blood cells, which are part of the immune system. So they help to protect the body against diseases. So one and three only. 20 refers to the following diagram of the human heart. Which label part contracts to pump blood around the body? So that would have to be C. C is pointing at the ventricle. The ventricle contracts and forces blood up through the aorta, which is going to carry the blood rich in oxygen and nutrients all around the body. Right, so C is the correct answer. So item 21 refers to the following diagram of a cell. The diagram most likely represents A. So that cell there is a phagocyte and you can clearly recognize it by the lobed nucleus inside. So it's in a regular shape and it has a lobed 
nucleus. So that is a phagocyte. Phagocytes, they engulf pathogens when they get into the blood. All right, moving on to 22. Capillaries have very thin walls which have only one layer of cells. This is a low. So the answer for that would have to be rapid diffusion of gases and glucose. It cannot be rapid diffusion of protein and fats because protein and fats are not actually diffused across the, the walls of the capillaries. They are large nutrients, so you only have like small nutrients and the gases, of course, oxygen and carbon dioxide, they are able to diffuse across the thin walls. So A is the correct answer. 23, which of the following vitamins assists in the process of blood clotting? So the answer for that would be vitamin K, very important nutrient for blood clotting, along with calcium. Item 24 refers to the following diagram, which shows parts of the human skeleton. So we're seeing the bottom parts of the human skeleton. Which of the following combinations correctly identifies the bones labeled X, Y, and Z? So X is pointing at the femur, so that is your thigh bone. Y is pointing at the tibia, your shin bone. And Z is pointing at the fibula, so that is the smaller bone that to be the tibia. So the correct combination, the correct answer would have to be B. The femur, the femur is X, the bone Y is tibia, and the fibula is the bone Z. Okay, item 25 refers to the following diagram of a human arm. So it's showing you all the muscles, the bones involved. So number 25, which of the following occurs when the arm is bent or flexed? So when you're lifting your arm. So the answer for that would have to be the biceps pulls on the radius. So remember when the biceps contracts, it is going to lift the arm, so it's going to be pulling on the radius. So biceps contract and you have the triceps relaxing, doing the opposite. And when the arm is as it is here, extended and stretched out, the triceps will be contracting while the biceps is relaxing. So always remember the muscles, they work opposite to each other. So that is known as antagonistic action. So they're moving opposite to each other. When one contracts, the other relaxes. Okay, question 26. Okay, which of the following connects muscle to bone? So the answer for that is A, the tendon. So the ligament, on the other hand, connects bone to bone. Question 27, which of the following allows movement in all directions? So we're looking at a ball and socket joint. So that would have to be the shoulder joint, D. Okay, number 28, which of the following sets of constituents is found in the urine of a healthy person? So a healthy person's urine should contain salts, urea, and water. So urea, salts, and water definitely should not contain glucose or proteins. So C is the correct answer, urea, salts, and water. Question 29. Liam notices that his face is flushed red after playing football. Which of the following processes causes his face to be flushed? So that is related to the skin, what is going on in the skin to regulate temperature. So vasodilation is the process that occurs, meaning that the blood vessels, they become wider to allow more blood flow. And usually they would, the blood vessels would raise a little closer to the skin. So it's all about cooling down the temperature of the body. So the 
heat flowing through the blood, the heat in the blood can escape when vasodilation occurs. So the widening of the blood vessels allows for the heat to escape and cool the body. So that is what causes the boy's face to become flushed because the blood vessels are actually going to be taking in more blood and they're going to be closer to the surface of the skin. Vasoconstriction is the opposite. That is when the blood vessels will get narrow and less blood will be flowing through and they go a little deeper beneath the skin. So you will tend to look a little paler when that occurs. So vasodilation, that causes the flushness. All right, item 30 refers to the following diagram which shows a cross section of the human skin. So the structure labeled X is the so you see X is pointing at a structure next to the hair follicle where the hair is growing. So that is the sebaceous gland which is responsible for producing an oily liquid known as sebum. So it helps to keep the skin moisturized and supple, not dry. Okay, item 31 refers to the following cycle which shows the control of water content in the blood by antidiuretic hormone. So this diagram is showing you what happens in osmoregulation, so regulating the amount of water. So it says which of the following pairs shows the processes taking place at S and N. So we have the pituitary gland releasing more ADH. So that is going to cause more reabsorption of water into the blood. And then in the other case, when less ADH is released, that is going to cause less reabsorption of water into the blood. So the correct answer for that one would have to be B. So more reabsorption for S and less reabsorption of water into the blood. Remember ADH is produced to try to conserve the amount of water in the body so that it doesn't escape in the urine. So it usually happens when someone is dehydrated. So you will have more of the ADH being produced when the person is dehydrated. Question 32, the central nervous system is made up of the, so that is the brain and the spinal cord. The peripheral nervous system will be made up of the cranial nerves and the spinal nerves. Item 33 refers to the following diagram of a motor neuron. So you have different parts labeled. So it says in question 33 which labeled part is the axon. So the axon is a thin fiber which is going to send electrical impulses away from the cell body. So three is pointing at the axon. One is actually pointing at the dendrites of the cell body. Two is pointing at the myelin sheath and four is pointing at the synaptic endings or the nerve endings. So the correct answer is three. So the axon is three. So C. Okay, item 34 refers to the following diagram of the human eye showing image formation. So 34, the image X is not. So the image, yes, is inverted on the retina, is formed on the retina, but it is not smaller than the actual object. So you must remember that. So C is the correct answer. So the image X is not smaller than the object. It should be the same size. Okay, item 35 refers to the following diagram showing some of the organs in the body which produces hormones. So it says which hormone is secreted by S. So S is pointing at the pancreas and the pancreas is responsible for secreting insulin and the other hormone secreted is glucagon. So B is the correct answer. Adrenaline will be produced from the adrenal glands, which are on top of the kidneys. The estrogen will be produced from the ovaries. And the thyroxine will be produced by the thyroid gland. Question 
question 36 which of the following comparisons is not true for nervous and hormonal control so let's go through each of them so electrical messages travel along neurons yes messages are transported in the blood that's correct for B chemical messages travel across synapses yes only chemical messages are involved yes C the response is usually short-lived that is correct and the effects are often long-lasting so that means that D would have to be the incorrect one messages travel slowly and take longer to have an effect that is certainly not true usually the messages in the nervous system are very fast and they have a rapid effect so that one is switched around there so D is the correct answer question 37 ovulation is the process by which so the mature egg is released into the ovida so that is ovulation it happens in the middle of the cycle usually around day 14 item 38 refers to the following diagram which shows the human spermatozoan which of the labeled parts contains mitochondria so if you look at the diagram of the sperm, B is the area, the mid-piece region of the sperm that would contain the mitochondrion, which is needed for producing energy so that the sperm can swim rapidly. So A is actually pointing at the tail, C is pointing at the nucleus, and D is pointing at the acrosome, which contains the digestive enzymes. All right, moving on to question 39. The corpus luteum secretes, so the hormone secreted is the progesterone. Remember the corpus luteum is the empty follicle, so that secretes progesterone to prepare for pregnancy. And question 40, which of the following methods of birth control is least effective in preventing pregnancy? So the answer for that would have to be the natural method. The only natural method that would be the most effective would be abstinence. But when they say natural method, they're probably looking also at withdrawal, which is the pull-out method, and the calendar method, which is not very reliable. So the other methods, barrier, hormonal, mechanical, those are more effective than the natural methods. Okay, which of the following occurs when a zygote receives one extra chromosome? So that would have to be a chromosomal mutation, and that is known as Down syndrome. So when you get an extra chromosome in the cells, so instead of having the chromosome number 46, that diploid chromosome number, you would have 47 in the cells. Number 42, in a multicellular organism, whenever cells need to be replaced, cells divide by, so that would be mitosis. Mitosis produces identical daughter cells, so it is necessary for growth, repair, and also in asexual reproduction. So mitosis is the answer, C. So item 43 refers to the following genetic cross which shows the inheritance of blood groups in humans. Alleles A and B are co-dominant to each other and both are dominant to O. So we have this genetic diagram and I've already worked out the genotypes for the F1 generation. So it's just a matter of matching up each of the gametes. So we have the first one KAB, L is AO. M is BO and N is OO. So the question asks which of the following offspring inherited the homozygous recessive allele? So homozygous recessive meaning both of the alleles are the same. So that would have to be D. So N is the one that inherited the O alleles which are homozygous recessive. So two O's. So he's going to be type O, blood type. Question 44, which of the following is an example of genetic engineering? So the answer for that would be D, the production of insulin 
like E. coli bacteria. So that is a common application of genetic engineering in the medical field. So remember genetic engineering has a lot to do with taking genes from one organism and putting them in, in, the, in another organism to manipulate the characteristics. So that's what's happening here. So this is an application that's very useful to produce um, insulin in a large amount. So we're using two organisms, the human, human cells, which will produce the insulin, and then the bacterial cells, which would pretty much be a vector to carry the insulin gene. So bacteria multiply very rapidly, so they can produce more and more of the insulin gene. So that's a perfect example of genetic engineering. Question 45, which of the following cannot be prevented by healthy living activities? So out of these different diseases, it would have to be the sickle cell anemia, which is a hereditary disease. So the individual would not have any control over that. Um, in terms of the others, the influenza, you know, you can build up your immune system by eating healthy, iron deficiency, anemia. So that's a deficiency disease, so you would need to eat the proper foods that will provide enough iron. And then with chronic heart disease, for sure, that has a lot to do with healthy eating habits and also exercise. So the sickle cell anemia is the one that is not going to be prevented. You can't prevent sickle cell anemia by healthy living activities since it's an inherited condition. Okay, 46. Sima has the following signs or symptoms constriction of her bronchial tubes, coughing and wheezing. She is most likely suffering from. So that is definitely asthma. So that's a respiratory condition. Okay, items 47 to 48 refer to the following diseases. So tuberculosis, typhoid, ringworm, and gonorrhea. So you have to match each of the following phrases with one of the options above each of which may be used once, more than once, or not at all. So for question 47, caused by a, a fungus. So which disease is caused by a fungus? That would have to be the ringworm. So that is C. So ringworm is not caused by a worm, but is caused by a fungus. Question 48, which causes severe diarrhea and abdominal pains? So that would have to be typhoid. So typhoid is a waterborne disease. It causes food poisoning. So B would be the correct answer for that one. Question 49. Antibiotics are chemicals which can safely be taken into the body. They do not harm human cells but they destroy. So antibiotics are known to destroy bacteria. Antifungal would destroy fungi and the molds, and antivirals would destroy viruses. But antibiotics are specific for getting rid of bacteria. Item, 40, item 50 refers to the following diagram which shows the stages in the life cycle of the mosquito. So which of the following stages are found in or on water? So we have the first stage is the adult stage. One is the adult stage. Two, that is the eggs. Three, the larva. And four, the pupa. So out of those four stages, two, three, and four would be found in or on the water. So that would be D. Item 51 refers to the following diagram. So 51, where is the leptospirosis vector most likely to be found? So we know the leptospirosis vector would be the rats. And rats are generally going to be found in warehouses, food storage warehouses. They like to be around food. So that would be C. Now, if they had asked about the vector for dengue or chikungunya, mosquitoes, no, 
that's a vector so the swamp area would definitely be high in vectors all right so moving on to 52 which of the following cells does the AIDS virus attack so the AIDS virus which is actually HIV human immunodeficiency virus that virus attacks the lymphocytes which are the white blood cells so these are the white blood cells that produce antibodies so the HIV virus destroys these white blood cells and makes it difficult for the immune system to fight off infections so therefore someone who develops AIDS after a few years a good few years they have a lot of opportunistic infections and they're more prone to becoming very sick because their immune system is compromised. All right, so C, lymphocytes. 53, which of the following gases contributes most to the greenhouse effect? So that would be the carbon dioxide. That is a well-known greenhouse gas. So when you have a buildup of that in the atmosphere, it leads to the greenhouse effect which contributes to global warming. Question 54, what is the effect of carbon monoxide on the human body? So there's a difference. So this is carbon monoxide. So this is a dangerous, a very toxic gas. When it gets into the blood, it can actually prevent oxygen uptake by the blood because the hemoglobin in the red blood cells tends to pick up carbon monoxide more so than oxygen. So it's going to pretty much substitute for the oxygen. So A is the correct answer. Question 55. The process by which water vapor changes to water is? So we're going from gas to liquid. That would be condensation. So this is part of the water cycle. Evaporation, that is when you have the liquid form going to the gas form, so water into water vapor. 56. The most effective way of purifying water in the home is, so that will be boiling and chlorination. So heat and the chemical chlorine, those are two good ways to purify water at home. Item 57 refers to the following graph which shows the oxygen concentration in a river for a five week period. So we have dissolved oxygen concentration on the y axis and the time in weeks on the x axis. So question 57, the oxygen concentration level is most likely affected by, so you can see that the levels have decreased over the weeks and since we're talking about a river the water more than likely sewage may have gotten into the water and sewage carries bacteria so bacteria often will use up a lot of the oxygen in the water so then that would cause the reduction in the oxygen over the period of the weeks so sewage is the correct answer there so in addition to the bacteria found in sewage, sewage can also carry nutrients such as nitrates and phosphates. So they can also lead to a process known as eutrophication. So they can contribute to um, the plants, the algal growth on the surface of the river. And then that in itself can lead to the collapse of the whole ecosystem and the reduction of the oxygen because a lot of the underlying organisms would not be able to receive um, light, for instance, for the plants. So over, overall, eutrophication is what is involved here that would cause the oxygen levels to decrease. All right, moving on to 58, which of the following stages are involved in the biological filter method for sewage treatment? So out of these stages, so we have residual matter is dried and used to make methane. So that's correct. Two, screening of large objects. So that's one of the first stages. And then three, stones covered with aerobic bacteria and protozoa, which feed off the organic matter. So it's the last stage that is not included in this method. 
that is more the activated sludge method. So the correct answer for this one, so one, two, and three only. So that would be C. All right, question 59, which of the following gases is produced in a landfill site? So the answer for that would be methane. So methane is formed from the decomposition of the organic matter. And 6C, the final question on the paper, a substance is biodegradable if it... So when a substance is biodegradable, it means that it can be broken down by bacteria to harmless materials. So A is the answer for that. So that completes the CSAT Human and Social Biology, June 2015, Paper 1.